Hello there, and welcome to episode one of the first season of The Land of Good and Evil, featuring the Dark Ages 5 War and Mythos mod, which is a pretty cool overhaul mod that I am experiencing for the very, very first time. We're going to play this wonderful world that I have created in the episode zero that is linked in the description box below there's an entire playlist link and well we're playing the civilization of the stockade of control we got exactly two whoa, whoa, no one holding there's one holding left and our story is we're playing in this land which is full of good and evil biomes because the mod pack is souping up evil biomes and souping up good biomes well at least i have another mod for that in case you want to see the mods episode zero got you covered including how this world has been created you see that contrast there's almost only good and evil biomes almost no neutral biomes and uh yeah our first fortress has the goal to rebuild the glory of our civilization to some degree we got as our neighbors a allied nation of Druidic Dwarves, probably these guys are related to our civilization, I really don't know. We're sitting here on a tile of good biome, and we got here the beginning of our base. So the name here of the Fortress Justice Paint is not the same that I had in Episode 0. That's because the Fortress of Episode 0 sadly glitched away. I was unable to load the save file, so I had to recreate the world, but I was unable to recreate the Fortress name. Very sad about that. I really like liked the old name, but whatever. Justice Paint is also fine. Okay, so for this episode the first goal will be to check out where we set up shop we're sitting in a good biome i admittedly have never played these and well it looks pretty nifty here we we got ourselves a area where we got what was it called uh well cannot look up the biome info here but uh we got plenty of trees you see got lots and lots of trees and we also got no real mountains that's a real bummer but i have seen this wonderful little thing here look at this isn't that neat when we put a lid on this thing here for one it's shaped like a battle hammer or an axe for another it's a wonderful entry area that we can control and put up nasty nasty defenses here so this fortress's official goal is going to be to be as big as possible to be as rich as possible and have too many and to have as many holdings as possible because our civilization has to shine again this is also a role play run that means my decisions will be according to the civilization that i'm playing i don't know my civilization yet we're going to get the we are going to get to know them but uh, for starters i really want to get myself a uh, a way in here so we're going to start out today with the basic layout for the fortress so i'm going to dig myself in here and we're going to widen that also here goes the first few things i always do with every new fortress we are not going to where is it so we that's okay we don't want to automatically collect webs that's an absolute no-no and we also don't want to claim other non-hunted dead and we don't want to have our death items claimed during a siege everything else i leave like that for now and children well they're going to have no refuse holding but the rest and no burial those uh, really stressful things the rest can stay on i think okay we now will assign a couple of uh, extra hot miners here because you know we have a regular start standard embark i'm not a big uh, fan yet of careful explore uh, careful preparations yet i say because i see the power of that tool but i'm not really fond of using it too well Alrighty, so we're going to have, well, I don't even know if I really want to keep that staircase here. 
I mean the up case, the upward, upward staircase. Probably we're just going to uh, eliminate that. For starters, we're just going to dig ourselves down like that. Since we're living on a light aquifer tile, I already foresee that this shaft will get stopped at some point. So we got fire clay. Nice. We got limestone here already. That's really good news. More limestone. So I wonder when we will hit aquifer, but this is already a really, really good start. We got ourselves one layer that is uh, clay. We got another layer that is sand. That's pretty good. We got the basic materials down and here we're already deep in the stone. All right. So, well, I got the feeling as if we have one of those scenarios where we're actually digging around the aquifer. Anywho, the thing that I want to do next is I want to set up some basic layout for the fortress. As you see here, I went for a big staircase and for the sake of the content compression here, I'm going to pause that video real quick and I'm going to set up the designators and once I have everything at a point where I can explain what I'm setting up and how, I'm going to continue that video. So that went really, really fast. I just did dug a little bit deeper and look what I found. So we are now, well, just, just in time, I was uh, fast enough to stop my silly little goofballs from getting us into real trouble. We now have access to the first layer of the caverns, as it seems. A very, very early access. And, well, for us currently, that's uh, more bad than anything else. Because, you know, we're unarmed, we're unprepared, and, well... <laughs> I got myself a perimeter for my fortress through that. This is the good news, you know, but the bad news is I really need to uh, seal that hole immediately. I do not trust this situation at all, and uh, therefore we're just going to roll a boulder on that hole and uh, call it a day for now. Under no circumstances I want to have this open while I'm setting up the basic perimeter of the base. So. I am a little bit confused about the fact where where my where the aquifer is at that I would have been promised, but well, we'll see about that. The aquifer is so important, mostly because without one, agriculture will be quite hard. But we got murky water that does the trick as well, so uh, we'll we'll use that if we don't get the aquifer rolling. But uh, it gotta be somewhere, no? Anywho, I'm going to carve out the basic design and then we're going to talk about how I want to run the basic infrastructure of Justice Paint. And that's what I got so far. So this chamber here is our basic embark space. I have, uh, as you see here, put bit of a garbage can icon on all these limestone boulders. As precious as they might be, I have here a garbage dump because I want to get rid of them for now so they don't clutter up this uh, basic storage pile. The basic storage pile's configuration looks like this. I accept everything inside here except for corpses and refuse. That's pretty simple because if you accept these, the whole, item, the whole array of items in that stockpile zone starts to rot. We don't want that, no? So we're going to set up this here as our basic um, base camp, where I'm going to set up the basic workshops that we require. It's always the same array. We require a carpenter, we're requiring a stone, uh, uh, stone worker, a crafts dwarf, and then you already have usually the usual suspects together. Down here, these two I'm going to use for a still. Oh, I forgot one. Bay. A still will come in here, and a kitchen will come in here. And of course, I forgot the oh, always so important uh, fishery. So, over here, you see some blueprints that I have already engraved. 
because I already know what I'm up to. So on this level, I want to do the agricultural business. This is going to be the agricultural hall. And over here, I want to do the clothing industry. I leave these as blueprints so we don't overstress our system at this point. Down here, we're, we're seeing the Stonecrafters parlor to be. And on the other side, I want to have the crafts dwarves and jewelers on and, and these things because i think they go pretty well hand in hand once the uh, one staircase deeper we have the wood workshop pretty nice large storage area is here foreseen and here we're going to produce a set of carpenters bowyers but also charcoalers if necessary i don't know if i'll find coal down there or not over here is going to be our metal area Basically, here we see one storage zone for economic rock and, and, and uh, any metal ore in general. Here the stuff will get smelted, and here we will have the forges, and here will the bars and blocks be stored. So I did my best to give this one a nice and compact design that will help out being effective. Also, the blueprints make it so that I don't overstress my workforce early on, because, you know, digging out large portions is a pretty, pretty heavy ordeal. Okay, so the very basic things are always the same. I love to do first a couple of limestone blocks, so we have something to work with, and at the carpenter's workshop, oh, these are new things, craft Gem furniture. Oh, hell yeah. I like the look of that. We're going to check that out later, but not for today. Let's see. Stone beds are a thing in the mod. Nice. Stone helm. Oh boy. We can gear us up with stone. Neat. That's uh, what not I expect what not what I expected from the carpenter's workshop, but okay. Here we got the regular things that we can expect from a carpenter's workshop. I'm only here because I want to have... Well, actually, I don't need to do anything from this workshop. Let's see. Is anything super new in here? Nothing on the first glance. We'll see about that. And over here, well, the rock workshop works the same as well. Okay. So I'm going to do the usual things, a door and a throne. Actually, we don't need the door. I learned that lately. And now we got to think a little bit about uh, how we're going to design this as a city, you know, because now we got the, the basics of the workshops down. This main staircase, I like it so far, is quite, is right now very very vulnerable in, in every aspect my plan is that this here will be an entrance that will be only open during peace times or something like that and there will be a more deadly and more complicated entrance maybe somewhere around here that will ultimately culminate into the main staircase but uh, you know stuff like that is on my mind just in case you were a wandering icon your fortress is damn open yes it is currently i plan to change that in the long run the only question that now remains is where will the city be at so for this fortress, I, I want to do something um, something I, I usually don't do, and that's having the city very near to my workshops. So my plan is to have the city and the apartments be practically right next to the, um, to the workshops and somewhat connected as well. I want to check out how well that works in the long run. I never tried that. Usually I had my city complex pretty hermetically sealed away from the from workshops. Workers had therefore a pretty long commute there. I want to see if I can use some tricks, some safety precautions along the way to make Justice Paint a more effective and at the same time uh, safe fortress. So, well, currently you, you see now why I have this as blueprints. I'm only carving open what I need to carve open. Let's build that fishery, shall we? So, 
in the starting phase i'm not going to go too crazy here for trying to to do any farming let's see what the uh biome says so far unicorns and hellhound okay we have a hellhound down there so that for example is one of the reasons why i why i don't want to have a permanent connection to that place just uh, well alrighty jokes aside we got to we have a lot of work in front of us so i'm carving out the stone workers area first because i know that these will be extremely useful in many many venues we need to bring up some sort of food production very soon because otherwise we will have um, long oh well food production <laughs> drink production my alcoholic little friends they need their booze more than their food but that's okay so we're going to set up one person as a plant gatherer and uh, we're going to make a everybody holds designator as much as i'll regret that use most of the time it is a necessary evil okay so we got lots of shells all right so oh, it already begins the clutter of the pond turtles all right i am going to set up some refuse stack for only the shells the thing is shells aren't actually bad quite the contrary they're pretty good uh, crafting material they have various uses but currently they just clog up my my stockpiles and i don't want that all right so let's set up that chair shall we i hope it's already done there we go so embrace the world's smallest office it's seriously like that it works doesn't it all right so i'm going to make my expedition leader the or well actually no no the fish dwarf can do that the fish dwarf can do that for for now i'm going to unassign him, him even from the fishing job usually I don't need it that early on. So what we're doing instead is we're assigning this good, fine, young dwarf fella into the rank of a manager. Yes, the expedition leader is the better manager, but whatever. Okay, automation! Hooray! So the next few steps are pretty, uh, pretty, pretty simple. We're going to excavate all the stuff that is between us and the city to be so alrighty gonna do something like that and here is going to be the main venue for for the new city there we go main alley and uh we're going to make two longer pathways and let's see i I want some fancy apartments this time, you know? Usually I'm a little bit uh, more pragmatic in all these things, but uh, I have decided that Justice Paint is supposed to be a rich fortress, not a poor fortress, so here we go. Let's see what kind of stones do we have available. We have clay stone so far, we have limestone so far. We don't really know what's going to be up there apart from that. Ugh, well... That's one pillar that we can take, okay. Thing is, we have almost no workforce currently. That's pretty harsh. Therefore, I don't want to have any too deep adventures. We're going to do two things, though. First off, press O and go into the work order area. Let's set up the lifeblood. Carpenter's workshop for barrels. Oh, oh wait, never seen. Do we make barrels? Or do we make stone pots? Yeah, we're making stone pots. So just for a moment, uh, consider it now. Not that the, my bad, Crafts Dwarf's Workshop makes the rock pots. Rock pots are stone barrels in in nutshell. We're going to make these out of claystone and not out of limestone because limestone is actually fluxstone, therefore valuable. Let's make sure we got always five of these fellas uh, free and we're making 
whoopsie, that's the wrong button. And we're making that job, let's say five times. And let's head over to the still. So, ooh, make essence of might, make essence of war, that's new stuff. I'll set up the brewery jobs now first, because these are evergreens, you know? It's just like that. We're going to produce drink up until 2000, and uh, let's see. For, for now, we're going to make that whenever we can. For now. I'm not sure if I'll, if I'll leave it like that. But for starters, this is a pretty nice setup, leading to a steady production of uh, jugs and booze. And that's all the dwarf needs early on, doesn't he? Alright, so since this is our food stone uh, stockpile to be, I'm already going to set up things here. So let's put up food and drink in there. Okay. So... We got fire clay cavern floor here in mixed in between, and we got to work on that water. There's so many things that I want to work on at the same time now. This is a little bit painful, it always is. I'm also going to carve out a little bit of that. So I'm basically activating parts of that blueprint. There we go. So, as you can see, we got three picks to, uh, to get uh, used, but it's just not enough for a fortress at that point here currently. So, the kitchen will receive another job as well. So, let's prepare easy meals. I don't want anything more than easy meals until we have 200, and then it's, uh, it's A-OK. -okay. But... Uh, What's really important now is that we get on over to the kitchen and we don't want the kitchen to use the plump helmets. Don't do that. Also don't allow the kitchen to cook away your booze early on. You need that stuff too badly. Okay, so far, so good. I'd say Justice Paint has a pretty nice start ahead of it. I'll be fast forwarding this process a little bit because, you know, currently there's nothing so exciting to see and nothing so exciting to talk about. Just dwarves swinging their picks. I'll see you when something fancy happens for the end of the video. Alright, a good moment for another update. So, by now the city core is being dug out and I'll be digging out that little connector here already. So the basic idea is that the apartments will then be reachable via this place. And we're going to put up a kind of a lock that we can smash down if we have any problems. So I also set up a meeting area here because, you know, up there at the, the wagon wasn't that, that wasn't safe. And until you have designated a new meeting zone. The wagon is the meeting zone for everybody, so take care of your meeting zone. I also have discovered something else which I find personally rather odd. Iron dwarfs. So these are trainable creatures. Just meant to show them to you because they are, as far as I know, not vanilla. I don't know. So, a dwarf-shaped creature born of living iron near the center of the world. I'm going to train them for war. I just meant to wait for that until I was recording again. So, I also ordered a couple of basics. Beds, doors, tables, chairs, and blocks of various kinds to be crafting those things to make this place look nice. You know, for me it is really important that we have those blocks available as soon as possible. Alright, so I also have brought up another daring venture. So one small corridor here goes over here and down that pillar. I want to know what is beyond there. You know, right now I have only access to two stone types. I don't want to mutter about that. Limestone. That early on. Is brilliant but you know we need to get past that so here we go war iron dwarfs that's a new thing to me let's see how powerful they are 
So here I hope that my plan will not go awry. Limonite. We struck iron. But we also happen to have uh, struck yet another cavern layer. So that was fast. We're going to bring up yet another piece of floor for that. You know me. Safety first. Ah, oh, we can't uh, do this right now because the staircase here is missing. The thing is, there's, uh, there's flying creatures and the moment they see something, they go for it. They just go for it. What's the petition? Monster Slayer? Monster Slayer. No, my friend, I'm not going to bring any Monster Slayers for now. Just, just not having it in me. The good news is only flying creatures would be technically capable of breaching that. But I'd be really, really reassured if somebody would take care of that hole in my defense. Pretty please? You know, I really don't like that. So let's carve another staircase all... That's the wrong designator. Duh. That can't work. So... Just want to make sure that I get more miners in that area. Also, widening that... Uh... Oh, come on, brain. Will you work for once? Sorry, guys. That sometimes, uh, you know things are as they are now. So there's uh, a great crocodile. That sure sounds uh, totally not dangerous. And enchantress people are visiting. So we also see several new NPCs that I haven't seen before. I'm widening this staircase, by the way, because I found limonite ore here. That means for me one thing for sure, we want to do mining here. So we're going to slap one claystone block uh, on that. Now I can not build here. Before that I wasn't able to build there because they had no, no, no tile left or right accessible that was uh, safe. So we're going to seal that thing off. Water! Nice! All in all, this is a pretty compact uh, thing. We don't have much depth layers to breach. We have the first cavern layer quite early, the second cavern layer is also hitting town quite early, and let's bring up the apartment for our dear expedition leader first. I think that's a fair thing to do. Alright, we also have the storage pile for the stone blocks. So here we go, that's the basic uh, stone block storage pile. Oh yeah, also very very important, totally forgot, it's bin time. Wooden bins, whatever bins you might want to use, I'm personally a big fan of wooden bins, are just making every stockpile a lot better. Let's get ourselves some trees. We got here the first trees in the whole run. So sand, pear, pecan. I already saw feather leaf trees here. That's officially the lowest weight uh, wood in the game. Altogether, the beginning of Justice Paint is quite solid. We have now struck iron. What we don't have is fuel typical thing when you go for a rare start but you know I feel quite uh, confident with all that I also have now access to, uh, to, to to the dungeon layer so you know this mod pack that we're playing in is featuring lots of uh, new creatures that are really really deadly and de dangerous and especially the caverns are supposed to be more deadly now let's see how these things are working out so i'll leave you guys for today here because i think that's a pretty brilliant start let's see where this will take us in the next episode i'm going to make sure that these apartments will be shiny and we're going to breach deeper so let me know in the comments how you like this uh, beginning so far and also let me know how you like this more compactified style because I do plan to skip ahead on things a little bit more in this series to, to have more narrative and less bloat and less, uh, 
you know, empty parts. I hope you guys liked it. Leave me a thumbs up if you did. Leave me a subscription if you want to support the channel. That's a dirty, cheap way. You don't need to pay anything. And if you want to stay notified, that bell thing is the way to go. Also, there is a playlist link down there leading to episode zero, how I created the world, how I created a fortress that had a different name on the same tile, all these things. There's also a little bit of talk about the world in there. And last but not least, a big thanks to the supporters of this channel. If you want to check out how you can support the channel financially, there's also links to Patreon take Paul and buy me a coffee. I'd be really delighted if you could give them a look. If not, you know, you watch the video until the very bitter end. You're quite a diligent person and I really appreciate that. It means a lot to me. I hope you have a wonderful day and see you on the next run in the land of good and evil.